Most patients and doctors, and probably you, believe that normal blood tests mean that you're healthy. I used to believe that too, until I started doing second opinion consultations for my patients with depression, brain fog, chronic pain, or chronic fatigue syndrome. I have seen too many patients inadvertently gaslit and put on medications with side effects that were never addressing the root cause in the first place. And the problem may have been that the right labs were never ordered or were were misinterpreted as normal, leaving the patient in the dark the whole time. So here are the top four missed opportunities in ordering labs and interpreting them to discuss with your doctor. Most doctors, much less patients, don't realize that normal lab reference ranges can be decided upon by measuring as few as 120 healthy individuals and picking a central value from that. This can possibly measure the wide range of age and sex and race and different medical conditions, can it? For example, is a normal value in a young white pregnant woman the same as a 65 year old African American man with diabetes? There are vanishingly few labs that have different ranges based on sex and age. Some of those include estrogen and testosterone, for example. Even then, values can vary widely, and normal for one person might not mean healthy or optimal for the next. So here's what it means for patients with brain fog, depression, chronic pain, fatigue, or other challenging to treat conditions. The first biomarker is ferritin. Ferritin is a key biomarker for iron stores in your body, which are necessary to deliver oxygen to your tissues to use to give you energy. Without enough iron, you can develop anemia, which can mimic chronic fatigue, depression, and many other conditions. The problem is that even without overt anemia, iron stores can be low and can contribute to these conditions. And most of my patients haven't had their ferritin checked recently, even though it's a relatively cheap test here in the United States. Now let's say you were lucky enough to get a ferritin test. The next problem is deciding what a normal value is. The World Health Organization sets a threshold value of below 15 nanograms per milliliter as abnormal. But there is sufficient data showing that threshold should be twice as high for diagnosing iron deficiency, which preferentially affects women, especially when they're menstruating, who are also more likely to be gaslit. Some conditions like restless leg syndrome require ferritin levels as high as 75 for treatment. In women with fatigue, ferritin levels of 50 can improve symptoms. If a woman or man comes to me with chronic fatigue or depression, I want to first rule out an iron deficiency before treating them like they have a Prozac deficiency. Have you ever struggled with iron deficiency or had your ferritin levels checked? Let me know in the comments below. Number two is testosterone, and there is so much misunderstanding about testosterone in women and men. It starts with symptoms of low testosterone, which can be much more than just sexual or reproductive. Testosterone can affect a woman or man's mood, libido, blood counts, bone density, and even sense of well-being. There are even randomized clinical trials demonstrating these impacts and benefits like you see here. The problem is that we don't know the ideal thresholds for treatment, which vary from lab to lab and study to study. On top of that, testosterone levels naturally decrease with age. A woman has a 50% drop in her testosterone between her 20s and her 50s. In men, free testosterone begins to drop 2-3% to per year once they grow older. Most doctors will treat a man with a level under 250, some under 400, and some even under 500. What's the right level? Your doctor needs to apply the scientific data to your specific symptoms. Lab values alone may not tell the whole story, especially in something as complex as your hormonal system. And certainly a lab's reference range should not be used as the sole factor in deciding treatment with your doctor. In women, it's even more vague because most practitioners don't consider the effects of testosterone in women because there's a huge research gap in looking at the importance of androgens, especially in postmenopausal women. And when women finally do get treated, it's not always clear what the ideal treatment level of testosterone should be, but this is not an excuse for not treating women. And don't forget that the use of oral birth control, even months or years prior, can also affect testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin levels. So you need to share your whole medical history with your doctor so they hopefully know how to interpret your lab values. And that's assuming your doctor is familiar with how to replace hormones in the first place.
If you've received a testosterone test as a man, look back at your lab reference value range. Was it 250 or 300? Unfortunately for women, the ranges are all over the place. Number three is vitamin D. And nearly every patient here in San Francisco tells me their vitamin D is normal, even though it isn't. Fortunately, vitamin D is easy to measure. Unfortunately, the threshold values are still kind of controversial. Historically, we thought values below 20 nanograms per milliliter were definitively low. This simply isn't the case anymore, especially in select patient populations. For example, in patients at risk for developing diabetes, which is a huge proportion of the population, a value of 50 nanograms per milliliter might reduce the risk of developing diabetes by 76%. Depression is also related to vitamin D levels, and levels of 20 nanograms per milliliter might not be high enough to reduce depressive symptoms in some patients. Cancer risk also appears related to vitamin D levels, but because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, its ideal level also can depend on BMI, or body mass index. In folks with normal BMI, supplementation to values over 41 nanograms per milliliter might reduce the occurrence of advanced cancers, highlighting the importance of the nuances when interpreting these labs. And there are ongoing studies with vitamin D levels in folks with chronic pain, especially fibromyalgia, so be on the lookout for results from those studies next year. Bottom line, you need to discuss your specific vitamin D level with your doctor because too low is risky, but too high also can be dangerous. Have you had your testosterone or vitamin D checked? How did that discussion go with your doctor? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're learning something new, hit that like button. And lastly, number four is cholesterol, which is important because it directly leads to heart disease, which is the number one cause of death in the world, and is so much more preventable than cancer, which is the number two cause of death in the United States. The chances of surviving a heart attack in most folks is under 10%, which is why preventing them with cholesterol monitoring is so important. But cholesterol labs can be confusing for doctors, let alone patients. Unfortunately, the cutoffs used by many labs are far from optimal for many patients, especially those with risk factors like obesity or diabetes. For example, most lab reports, and probably yours, list a triglyceride level under 150 as normal. Just look at this graph where every line shows the risk of a cardiac event based on patient's triglyceride level. Clearly, the lower the number, the better, even under 80. 80 versus 50 is a difference of 2x almost. And other markers like LDL cholesterol and apolipoprotein B similarly have different cutoffs based on your risk profile to help prevent that heart attack in the first place. It depends on the patient's profile. It's not a one-size-fits-all for the lab values here. And this is why you should ask your doctor specifically for the numbers in your lab report and not just accept it was all normal. Especially if you feel you're at higher risk of cancer, heart disease, or hormonal issues, or any other number of complications we talked about. To learn more about my approach to supporting longevity and treating depression, PTSD, chronic pain and fatigue, visit my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com. Share what you've learned with loved ones, hit the like button and subscribe to keep up with all of my medical videos. And remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.